Hello. In this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration of the multi-level modeling capabilities of the Jamovi program. And this particular demonstration is based off of analyses that were performed uh, as part of this article right here uh, by Guinness et al. So the article is Best Practice Recommendations for Estimating Cross-Level Interaction Effects Using Multi-Level Modeling, and this appeared in the Journal of Management. Uh, for a copy of this article, you can actually go to uh, the first author's uh, website right here, and you can see that there's a link for the PDF version of the article, and then also there's a link for the data set, and the data is actually contained in a CSV file. The original authors um, analyzed the data using the R program, and although Jamovi is built off the R program, it, it looks a lot different in terms of how to uh, interact with the data. So what I'm going to do is open up Jamovi here and you can see I already have the data set that's already imported uh, into the program. And before we get started, let me just note too that if you're when you are uh, carrying out the analyses, you're going to be using this uh, module right here, the linear models module. And you can see under there it says mix model. So that's what we're going to be using. When you first install Jamovi, uh, that module is not actually incorporated, and so what you'll need to do is to add it. And it's added very simply by just going up to the right-hand corner of the, the uh, interface, click on plus module right here, and then click on Jamovi library. When you do that, you can see that one of the uh, modules is this one right here, which is what we wanted to install. And you can see I've already installed it, so there's not really anything else to, to have to do. Now, in terms of the variables that are included in the data set, I'm just going to draw your attention to several of them. First off, let me note that um, basically the models are two level models. At level one, we have essentially individual employees, and level two um, is uh, essentially work teams. So we have employees at level one nested within level two units, which are work teams. The dependent variable Y is the experience of empowerment of the individuals within the work teams. And the level one predictor is the perceived quality of the relationship with the leader. Uh, the level two predictor is leadership uh, climate, where higher values represent um, a more positive uh, perceived climate. Now, the authors um, uh, who created the data set, they actually have var var variables in here that represent centered variables and so forth. But I'm going to show you a couple of tools in Jamovi that make centering uh, pretty easy um, when you're running your analyses. Okay, so going back to the article, we're going to be focusing in on replicating the analyses in Table 1. So the first model is a random intercept model, basically a null model with no predictors. And so in this case, we're just going to allow the intercepts uh, uh, to vary across the groups. And uh, essentially, what we're basically testing is whether the mean levels of empowerment vary significantly across the groups. So to carry out the first analysis, we'll go up to linear models, go to mixed models, and as you can see, we open up our interface, and on the right, you have sort of a blank screen. And as we populate on the left, things are added on the right. So we're going to take the level two identifier variable and move it to the cluster variable uh, variables box. We're going to move X. Well, it's actually, we're not using X just yet. We're going to move Y to the dependent variable box. And as we scroll down, you'll see, too, that the default estimation is uh, restricted maximum likelihood. And if you click off of this, it will give you just standard maximum likelihood estimation. Next, we'll click on, uh, under random effects, we'll click on intercept and move it over. And so when we do this, you can see that everything is populating on the right. You'll also notice that up here, you actually get the R code in terms of the model specification. So if you're wanting to learn a little bit about how it's coded in R using the LME4 uh, package, that's it right there. You'll see that we have our uh, fixed effect, our fixed component for the intercept. Uh, right here, you see we have 95% confidence interval and test uh, values and so forth. Under here, we've got random components. So you can see this is the, the uh, variance for the intercepts across the groups, and this is the level one variance as well. 
and this right here would be the interclass correlation coefficient. So all of these values match those that are presented in this first table, right, our first uh, column right here. Now the next model is going to be a random intercept model, but then also adding in fixed slopes. So we're going to add in the level one and level two predictor variables. So what we'll do in this case is uh, scroll back up. We'll add X under covariates, and we'll add this WJ right here uh, also as a covariate. Now, right now, these two variables would be considered uncentered, and one thing that you can do is to click on covariate scaling. And actually, I, I should have said this, in the original data set, they were uncentered, but by default, if you go under covariate scaling right here, you can see both of them are centered. And in the actual article, they used cluster, uh, within cluster centering. So we can change this just by clicking on this arrow, going down to cluster-based centered. The other one was uh, basically grand mean centered across the level two units. So that's uh, fine as it is. So at this point, we have the same results that are presented in uh, column two within this particular table. And so you can also see that uh, X, which was our level one predictor, which was the perceived quality of the relationship with the leader, there's a positive coefficient it's statistically indicating statistical significance right here. So basically higher levels of perceived quality of relationship with the leader is associated with uh, greater levels of, of empowerment. And then the WJ variable right here was essentially our leadership climate. And we had a positive coefficient and it was statistically significant indicating that uh, you know, greater uh, positive climate was associated with uh, higher levels of, of empowerment. Okay, so next we are going to transition to model three. And so in this case, we have random intercept and allowing the slope for the level one predictor to randomly vary. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll open this back up again and basically everything up to, the, up to the random effects box is going to be the same. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our predictor variable and move it over to the random coefficients box. So this is allowing the slope for the relationship between our perceived quality of, of the relationship with the leader and perceived empowerment to vary across the work groups. Okay, and so now looking at our output, uh, we, we still have the basic same results concerning the fixed effects for our level one and level two predictors. Both of them are positive, positively and significantly related to uh, empowerment. Under random coefficients, now you can see that, uh, again, this is our level two intercept with the variance right here, the level two predictor uh, with its variance, and then the level one uh, residual variance is this right here. You can also see that we have the correlation between the... Um, uh, the intercept and the slopes are the randomly varying intercepts and slopes. If for some reason you didn't want to allow uh, the intercepts and slopes to be correlated or the variation the intercepts and slopes to be uh, correlated, you can click under effects correlation and click on not correlated and it will remove that. But uh, the basic demonstration actually included correlated uh, intercepts and slopes across the groups. So we're going to leave that where it is. Okay, for the last uh, part of the demonstration, we are now going to include a cross-level interaction. So in other words, what we're going to be testing is whether group climate moderates the relationship between the perceived quality of relationship with the leader and empowerment. So in this case, we're going to be adding in and testing the interaction term. So this is the cross-level interaction right here. So let's go ahead and do this. So everything else is going to be left exactly you know, the same in, uh, up in the first set of boxes. Now what we're going to do under fixed effects is we're going to uh, highlight these two variables right here, click on this box and move them over to create the interaction term. So now you can see within our, uh, within our output for the fixed effects, this is the slope for the interaction term. You can see it's statistically significant. Now let's say that we want to visualize the interaction. Well, what we can do is scroll down 
and you can see there's a little box for plots. And so at this point, what we can do is we can click on our uh, level one predictor, move it over to the horizontal axis box. Our level two predictor goes to separate lines. And so now you can see that we have the, uh, the plot for the simple slopes for uh, the relationship between our level one predictor and um, our level one outcome variable. If you want tests for the simple uh, effects, you can also click on this little box right here and kind of scrolling up, it's a little hard to see, but basically uh, we can also move X over to the simple effects variable, the uh, level two predictor over to the moderator. And so now what happens is that in addition to having our plot, we have our simple effects tests for um, the relationship between our level one predictor and uh, level one outcome across uh, three levels of the level two moderator variable. So that pretty well concludes this demonstration and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.